Welcome to A Sky Full of Stars. This is a program where we talk about the titles of Our Lady, in the Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Each Saturday, we explore one particular title, so that in one year, we would have honored Our Lady with all the titles in the Litany. Join us each week, as we chit-chat about the different virtues that the Church ascribes to Our Mother. Before we begin this week's episode, let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, Let's lift the veil of Mary's many titles, and get to know the Lady within. Today, we will reflect on the title, Mother Most Amiable. Hello and welcome to this episode of A Sky Full of Stars. This is a program where we honor and learn about each of Mary's titles each Saturday. I am your host, Joe B. Provido. In this episode, we will reflect on the title, Mother Most Amiable. In English, the word amiable means pleasant or friendly. And we wonder how in the world did we get the idea that Mary is friendly or pleasant. Now, when studying the original Latin version of the litany, we find out that friendliness or pleasantness wasn't what the church was asking us to think about Mary. The Latin words that were used are mater amabilis, and amabilis comes from amare, which means love. And we find, we will find the different renderings of this in the Romance languages. Now, when we say Romance languages, we don't mean Romantic languages. We mean languages that were derived from Rome, which spoke Latin. So, languages that came from Latin. So, in Spanish, it is amor. In French, it's l'amour. And in Italian, it is amore. So, amabilis translates better as lovable. In English, then, the meaning of mater amabilis is better understood as mother most lovable. So, using that as context, why do we say Mary is the most lovable person in the world? Next to God, of course. So, spiritual beauty is so lovable to God's eyes. From all eternity, God saw that Mary is spiritually flawless, blameless, and sinless. We might say, well, uh, you know, God will that Mary uh, would be immaculately conceived, so he fell in love with her, fell in love with his work. But we shouldn't forget that while we think of events as linear in time, God transcends time. So when he's thinking of Mary before creation, and when he's thinking of the immaculate conception, uh, or when the immaculate conception is happening, or the assumption of Mary, all of these things are present to him at the same time. Uh, also, Mary participated in God's plans and also in the grace that was given to her. So it isn't as if Mary was this doll that God made and had no say in it. Uh, no, in fact, she consented to God's will and she participated in it. So Mary is so spiritually perfect that she became the object of God's most tender affection that hasn't been expressed in any other creature. So for example, the father loved her so much that, cho- that he chose her to be the mother of his only son. In that way, she was chosen to be part of his saving plan for all humankind, of all the persons of all history. He chose one, one, one woman, and that was Mary. Um, and the son, uh, our Lord uh, Jesus Christ, loved her so much that he chose to be obedient to her as he grew up. Imagine Jesus is God, and yet he obeyed her as he grew up. And and when he entered into the public life, uh, it was through the suggestion of his mother in a very spectacular miracle in Cana. We can also say that um, when, when Christ hung on the cross, our Lord showed his love for Mary by putting her in the care of his beloved apostle John, whom he trusted. Uh, Mary was so lovable too to the Holy Spirit that He chose her to be His spouse in the conception of our Lord. 
So God loved her so much that He couldn't allow her body to decay and so took her to heaven, both body and soul. So we can see how God really loves our, our, our mother. Uh, in fact, from the prophecies and the types of the Old Testament, we see that God has been thinking about her. For example, we read in Isaiah, how about a virgin will give birth? Uh, we also see types of Mary in Eve, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Judith, uh, Yael, uh, and Esther. The Ark of the Covenant is a type of Mary. The Temple is a type of Mary. So many things in the Old Testament. So, you know, sometimes when we hear a song that we like very much, uh, we unconsciously sing it out loud or in our heads. Uh, from where I am, we call it LSS or Last Song Syndrome, no? It's a, it's a tune no, that we can't get out of our minds. <laughs> and so we're just playing and playing again and again. Uh, now, Mary is like this melody in the mind of God that he, he, he can't stop thinking about her. And so he hints about her all over the Old Testament as if she were a chorus appearing again and again. Now, the Song of Songs is an interesting book which we can use for our reflection. Uh, the Song of Songs is a... Uh, song, uh, a book of the uh, Old Testament, which was uh, purportedly written by uh, King Solomon. and In some Bibles, it's called uh, the Song of Solomon. Now, it is a song and it is meant to be sung, but it doesn't have the rhymes that we have in English. Um, uh, so we're accustomed to rhymes. But the way that they would rhyme during that time was they would repeat ideas. That was the way that they would uh, rhyme. And uh, so the song is about a bridegroom uh, and his bride who are temporarily apart. And they're talking about each other, uh, their wonderful virtues uh, that they see in one another. And that was the way they expressed their love for one another. That's, that's the language of love that the Song of Songs is trying to convey. So one might ask, well, why is there a book in the Bible about two lovers who are longing to be with one another? It is because it is an allegory for God, who in the Old Testament presented himself as a bridegroom to his bride, Israel, his chosen people. In the New Testament, Jesus is the bridegroom, and the church is his bride, his chosen people. So it is always about a longing of God to be in union with his people. Now, on another level, uh, because the Bible has many levels and the Song of Songs has many levels, one of the levels is that we can see the bridegroom as the Holy Spirit and Mary as his bride, his spouse. So in the Song of Songs, we can put words of the bridegroom into the lips of the Holy Spirit when he talks. And one of my favorite lines is this. Uh, the bridegroom says, How beautiful is your love, my sister, my bride. You have ravished my heart with one glance of your eyes. That is how beautiful Mary is to God. And we too are ravished with Mary's spiritual beauty. We make novenus to her, we pray the rosary daily, we make pilgrimages, we compose songs about her. Sometimes our non-Catholic friends think we overly exaggerate our veneration of Mary. No? Uh, what they don't get is that uh, it is a language of not of theology or business or logic, it's a language of love. We don't talk. We don't talk to Mary as if we were talking in a, to some to our business uh, um, companion. Uh, we we're speaking about love to her, uh, and the and it's always um, widely exaggerated. So, uh, for example, uh, if you're female and your husband or boyfriend tells you uh, you're the most beautiful woman, you're the most beautiful girl in the world. Of course, you don't understand that as being factual, or else you'd be winning the Miss Universe pageant every year. Um, of course not. You understand it as a burst of endearment. And that's what we do too when we write songs about Mary. We are wildly exaggerated in how, how we express our love, uh, which we cannot contain for her. And why are we drawn to do this? One might ask. Well, the Father loves the Son because the Son is the perfect reflection of the Father's love. Mary, on the other hand, is the perfect reflection of God's beauty. So naturally, we are attracted to that. Sometimes our pastor or our priest asks us to become other Christs. Since uh, Christ loves Mary in a superlative way, we can only become other Christs if we love Mary the same way Christ loves her. 
But that is easy because how can we not fall in love with Mary? For she possesses the virtues of charity, love, more than anyone else does. She's a perfect reflection of, the, of God, of her son. And how can we not fall in love with her if she is a perfect reflection of God? So to end this reflection, when we invoke the title, Mother Most Amiable, let us remember that Mary's spiritual perfection is so beautiful that God loves her above all of creation. And so we pray, Mother Most Amiable, pray for us. That is it for this episode. This is Joby of the Catholic Talks. May God bless you and may our mother always keep you in her mantle. I hope to see you next episode. Bye-bye. The contents of this program are based on the book, A Sky Full of Stars. Subtitled, Know Our Lady Through Her Titles in the Litany. Hardbound, paperback, and Kindle versions of the book are available on Amazon. In the Philippines, the paperback is available at ourcatholicfaith.net. Get your copy today. This program is brought to you by The Catholic Talks. Join us again next Saturday for another episode of A Sky Full of Stars. Let's fall in love with our mother all over again.